All right, let's do this. If you have seen my previous Stephanie Hans videos, you only have to watch the first few minutes because this section is showing all the recent books I've picked up since the last time I did a Stephanie Hans video. Let's get going. Right in the back here, we've got Black Knight, Curse of the Ebony Blade, one through five. They're all one in 25 connecting variants. Some of them, specifically number four, um, and number one, I guess, as well, I think are absolutely gorgeous. Overall, it's kind of okay. Most connecting variants, in my opinion, just have like one or two pieces of clothing crossing over. So, you know, these could all be separate <laughs> issues as well. Uh, let's take a look down here, see if we can embiggen this a little bit. And oh my gosh, this one I was not even aware of until I was doing an eBay search. Black Panther 166. This is a Stanley um box exclusive so you had to order a stanley mystery box or exclusive box or something um and i just absolutely love this you've got t'challa and stan lee underneath and uh storm floating in the sky picking up the umbrella absolutely gorgeous next up we have x-men red number four another storm and if the original run on storm that she did was fabulous but holy cow check this out i mean this is just this is a woman who's not stopping. Um, she's still trying to put out new stuff and create new styles and learn and grow and experiment. And sometimes she misses, but sometimes like this, she absolutely hits. And oh, wow. Again, I think this one hits. Um, I only got this one and again, in the other variants, uh, something about the yellow and uh, his helmet turning and just, just peeking on Grogu, right? We're not like, Overdoing Grogu. Love that. She's doing a run uh, that is not actually completed yet on Multiversity Teen Justice. So this is, I don't know DC. This is one of the young Robins, I'll say. She's uh, looking really cute there. I like that. You know, putting her hair up. Got a little batarang in the mouth. Ready for action. Uh, this is Kid Flash, Impulse, Young Flash, Little Flash, Teenage Flash. I don't know. This is one of the, one of the guys that runs fast in DC. Um, she's got like three or four more out. If I went to the, my LC yesterday, I probably could have picked them up because they, a couple came out last week and I haven't been there in a week, but we'll just have to make a new video. Grim number two, Virgin variant. Love that. Magic the Gathering. There was also a Virgin variant of this that I didn't bother getting because it's the same cover and I'm not a big fan on Virgin variants. Thor 24, all the different, uh, iterations of Thor there in the fire. Very cool. He's, there we go. Uh, Dark Ages number one. I love this cover because when I first saw it, I focused on this as the face, not realizing this was a side profile of like Ghost Rider. And this is just a really big spiky shoulder. You know, sometimes Ghost Riders like big spiky shoulders. This is not a new issue from her, but this is Journey into Mystery uh, 639. And it's a new stand. So I picked this one up recently. Um, you know me, you know I love my newsstands and I love my Stephanie Hans. Uh, Red Sonia, it's like the unbeatable Red Sonia or some Red Sonia moniker. This is issue one. This is uh, Bird City Comics exclusive, limited to 600, I believe. Uh, Absolute Carnage, Avengers Forever, or sorry, Carnage Forever, Avengers Forever. A lot of Forever is in this. Uh, oh, it's the Carnage Forever variant of Avengers Forever number four. Whatever. It's a cool cover. It's Stephanie Hans. I dig it. And then we've got um, Faithless. This is, I believe, Volume 3, Issue 2, if I'm not mistaken. And I might be. I'm not positive. Uh, so that's all the new stuff. If you've seen my other videos, you could stop there and you'll have caught up to everything. Otherwise, keep watching. Die! My favorite comic that Stephanie Hans has worked on. Just absolutely gorgeous artwork on the interiors and a lot of uh, variant covers as well as all the A covers. Uh, in the back row from left to right, we've got issue number one, a variant, the Virgin variant, uh, signed by Kieran Gillen, signed by Hans and Gillen, probably can't see that. We've got the second printing of number one, but we also have the third printing of number one, and then we have an exclusive she did for Comic Mint. Down here, we have the fifth printing of number one. We do not actually have the fourth printing of number one, believe it or not, I'm missing something. We have the fourth print virgin variant. We have the fifth print virgin variant. We have issue number two. Issue number two, second print. 
issue number two, third print, issue number two, virgin variant, the third print, and virgin, uh, what is that, fourth printing, issue number three, three second, three third print, you can see they were kind of rushing these and rush, running out of ideas, and I don't blame them. The comic took off like they couldn't believe in the beginning. And there is a virgin variant to the third or fourth print. And there is issue four and issue four, the second print. Move this aside. Boom. 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 And boom. While I'm setting up here in the back row, you've got issue five. You've got issue six, you've got issue six, the second print, and then you've got issue six, another limited variant that they did for, I believe, a UK comic store um, support or something that was limited to 500. And then here we have the rest of the issues where they didn't go quite as crazy with the number of variants and stuff. Here's issue seven, done by, A cover done by Hans. These are all the A covers done by Hans. There's eight. 9, 10, 11. Oh, they came back for the third arc, and all of a sudden they were super popular again after a hiatus. So there's the variant issue 11, 12, issue 13. And finally, issue 14. 15, 16, oh, they did another one of those exclusives for a comic shop in England. I believe this is Traveling Man UK. It took me about a year to get. I had to uh, email them several times, but their customer service was absolutely great. Uh, 17, 18, probably my favorite cover of all of them, 19, and then... Not a great cover, but great in the context of the story. Issue 20. I believe the first team up between Kieran Gillen and Stephanie Hans was when they worked together on Journey into Mystery. And in the back there, you see a five issue connected series uh, where the artwork I think is really great. And actually, let's move this out of the way so you can see Kit Loki. Um, this was in one shot called Exiled, a Journey into Mystery issue, a New Mutants issue issue journey into mystery new mutants so it just goes across like that i thought the connecting art was great on that so i figured i would highlight that separately from the comics that are going to go into here um i believe i have every issue from where she started to where the run ended with the collaboration between the two of them uh starting off we have issue i should probably know the number of that 621 622 623, excuse me, let's do that again, 622, 623, 624, 625, 626, 626.1, which is not a Stephanie Hans cover, don't ask me about that, 627, 628, 629, 630, love that one, 631, 632, that's one of the minor keys in this run, um, like a future version of his self called Eichel, or I don't know, it's one of those, <laughs> it's one of those, I forget, minor keys, uh, 630, whatever I'm up to, 633, and 634. And of course, I should probably go over here and grab this one. This is the 1 in 50 variant she did for issue 633. Um, just an amazing, amazing cover. Uh, if you look closely, a creature has a head in its right hand and a leg in the left hand and is just looking as sick and twisted as can be. 
one of my all-time favorite covers and if you ever come across this in the wild um which i never have i had to ebay this one very hard to find there is um not a lot of one in 50 purchasing going on for stephanie hans covers or for this series back in 2016 17 whenever it came out she just wasn't that popular yet so very few retailers were ordering anywhere close to 50 copies of this if you ever see this one for a decent price snatch it up Boom. continuing on we have issue 635 636, 637, and that's part of that exiled uh, connecting variance that I was showing you earlier, 638, 639, 640, 641, and this apparently is also a ratio variant. I didn't even realize that. Shout out to Thor, who uh, I almost bought this from him, and then I realized I already had it. Um, but just a great, great cover. Again, it's a 642, 643, and finally, sorry, that's 645. So where did I go wrong in my counting? 42, 41, 42, 45. So 43 and 44, both of which I believe are not done by Stephanie Hans. I'll have to double check that. But I think the last time I went through this, I realized there were a couple that she did not do. And those were the two of them, 643 and 644. But then coming back to 645, she did do that one. Stephanie seems to like the name Angela. Here's Angela, Asgard's Assassin, issue one, issue two, issue three. Three, issue four, I love that reflective cover in the knife. Issue five, issue six, Angela Queen of Hell. She only did a variant issue one. Then she did issue, nope, sorry, that's Julian Tedesco. She did issue two, issue three. Queen of Hell issue four with Scourge and this beautiful reflection in the blade. Issue five, she did not do issue six for this run. Issue seven. And then going into Neil Gaiman's world of um, 1602, we have a little Witch Hunter Angela. Issue one, issue two. These always remind me of Vermeer's with the uh, dark background and the little light on different parts. Issue three and issue four. She did a run on Generations. This is one of the ones that she sent me. Um, I struck up a short correspondence with Stephanie during COVID. She had tried to auction off some books um, for uh, a charity or for a comic, not a comic shop, but for like a charity for books. Um, companies that were suffering during the initial stages of COVID and she would posted some books. She's like, these seem to be my most expensive books. And I texted her back, texted, I DM'd her on IG. I don't know her number. I didn't text her. I DM'd her on IG. I'm like, those are not your most expensive books. These are your most expensive books. And I'm like, I'm going to donate and I would love to get one of those books. And we ended up talking and what ended up happening is I uh, ended up purchasing some books for her, I gave her, I think, like $250. I knew one of the books that I was getting, but I did not know the rest of them. Um, she said, I'll surprise you. Um, and I said, I trust you. Uh, and she signed them all, of course. And in addition to that, I donated like $100 to one of these charities. Um, so 350 all in. Um, and I got about five or six books from her, including one big one that I'll show you later. So, and plus they were all signed. Um, plus I got an envelope from France that had her name on it, which I thought was really cool. <laughs> anyway, fanboying here. Let's get back to Generations, the Marvels, Miss Marvel and Miss Marvel. This is, again, from that Stan Lee exclusive um, Powell Entertainment box, just like that uh, Black Panther one was. This is uh, Generations with uh, Jean Grey and Phoenix. Here is... 
The Bravest is called Captain Marvel and Captain Marvel. Spideys. And we've got Miles and Peter, of course. And finally, The Americas with Steve Wilson and Steve, sorry, Sam Wilson and Steve Rogers. It's getting late. And on this side, we have one that she did with Iron Man and Iron Heart. And as you'll see later, her Iron Heart um, cover is fabulous. So I love that she, this is the second Iron Heart that she's done. I mentioned earlier, she did a run on Storm. Uh, this was written by Greg Pak. This is variant issue three. I think this is the first one that she did. And then there's issue four, issue five, issue six, seven. I absolutely love that one. The look she's giving. <laughs> Eight, Storm and Gambit, always together. Guy really annoys me. Nine, and 10. I don't believe she did 11 or 12 in this run. Oh, she might have done. I just saw it up on the wall there. So I'll have to show that to you later. Um, Marvel Zombies Resurrection. I always like to pair this one with this uh, Deaths uh, of Wolverine because it's very similar. There's another Death of Wolverine, but not Deaths, just Death. Um, this was a Mile High Comics exclusive. And then Dark Wolverine. A little Inhumans action, very much like that one. And finally, an Iron Fist cover. Not one of my favorites, but okay. We'll take it. Magneto, issue six, featuring what looks like the Guardians of the Galaxy. A man thing cover, very sinister indeed. Oh, Miss Marvel, such a great, great cover. Absolutely love this one. Actually, I don't have this one signed by G. Willow Wilson. She's gonna be at Emerald City. I think I need to get that one signed. I've got the Virgin variant signed, I'll show you later. Um, this original Sin with Black Widow and the eye there. Gorgeous. Another gorgeous one, Phoenix Resurrection, issue three. Jean Grey, contemplative little bubbles there, I like that. Claws of the Panther, very cool. Captain America, not one of my favorite ones. I don't love the greens, I don't love this green in particular. I love the Hydra in the eye. This was at Half Price Books um, today. I almost bought a second copy and I stopped myself. Um, I'll probably go back and get it. Oh, look at this, look at this. This is uh, issue zero variant, love that. And then this X-Men red blue, again, another gorgeous, gorgeous cover. Cosmic Ghost Rider, issue number one. S Guardians of the Galaxy, issue two, another great, great cover. Guardians of the Galaxy with Gamora. Not one of my favorites, but okay. And then an actual Gamora <laughs> issue. That's issue number four. And Stomp Out Bullying variant two, Guardians of the Galaxy 20. Um, again, not one of my favorites, but okay, I'll take it. I'm just gonna check the camera, make sure I'm not screwing this all up. Yeah, we look pretty good. Let's go on. Trial of Magneto. That's a more recent one, same with the Eternals. Um, I'm not sure if I've shown these before, but I didn't want to go crazy with reorganizing. This is one of my absolute favorites that's not, um, that's not like a virgin variant or anything. This is Extreme X-Men issue 7.1. Uh, Kitty Pride and Lockheed there, just loving that. I think it's Kitty Pride and Lockheed. We're gonna go with Kitty Pride and Lockheed. Powers of X, issue one, great variant. Hellions, I always thought this cover would get more love than it, it did, but that's okay. Not everybody has to love it. I love this uh, Marauders, another Storm cover. 
Death of Doctor Strange. Yeah. Strange, issue two, featuring Clea. Mother of Demons, probably one of my least favorites of, of all hers. Uh, totally Awesome Hulk, issue 11. Kind of dig that. Defenders, uh, Hulk variant, issue 10. Like that, very different style. Avengers, uh, New Avengers, issue 22. Uncanny Avengers, issue 8. This is one of the ones she sent me that was signed. This is the uh, lenticular variant to uh, Thor 700. It's supposed to be Captain Marvel Thor. I don't know if that's coming out in the camera, and I really don't care, because they did a B or a, a second printing um, without the lenticular, so you get to see the actual artwork, and I kind of dig that. They did that. Look at this one. Another one she sent me, signed, uh, Thor number 6. Mighty Thor, what is this, issue 16? I can't, 16 or 18, 18, excuse me. This was the first ever uh, work that she did for any company, uh, specifically Marvel. This is um, before this, she was doing local comics in uh, for French companies, self-published and other things like that. And there is the Nomura one-shot issue one. Let's take a break here. Coming to the end of my boxes, before I get to my wall, we've got a run that she did on Brian Wood's Aliens Defiance for uh, Dark Horse. This is a comic block uh, variant. And then we've got issue seven, issue eight, issue nine, which is really scary. issue 12 and that is uh i don't know if i know i've got one on the wall i'll show you in a minute i don't know if i'm missing any others from that run buffy i thought i had all of these apparently i was missing this issue so i just got this the other day um this is i think season eight this uh, storyline is called the reckoning there's issue two issue three and issue four. And of course, you got Buffy comics. You're gonna have some j other Joss Whedon stuff. This is Dollhouse. I think this is the only one she did for Dollhouse. And then she did a couple issues for Angel. I don't really know much about the Angel comics. I know I love that cover though. Castaways. And another Angel issue. So these are some random ones from one of the volumes or seasons of Angel. Uh, Tomb Raider. I like this because it's uh, I got it signed by Gail Simone. She did the writing for it, so it's kind of cool. Um, and another Tomb Raider, issue 7. And finally, issue 8. So a couple from Tomb Raider. Some various different properties there. Jumping over to friend detective comics we have batman issue 14 which is up there in my top 10 <laughs> don't know if it is my top 10 but um it's definitely up there i might have a few copies of that um issue 15 just the same drew them the same way but different coloring and it just doesn't work as great as this one is, you know, very pointy ears and stuff, um, this one doesn't work. I don't know if it's the nose or the goggles. So now 15 doesn't work for me. Oops, some more 14, because like I said, it's one of the greatest covers ever. Um, she did a Dead Man little mini series. There's issue one, two, which is really, really beautiful there. And three, Amethyst, issue one. DC Bombshells United, another beautiful cover. Absolutely love this. Raven, I'm talking about those fingers, the way they're very straight. Um, she does that a couple times. Harley and Ivy, meet Betty and Veronica, issue three. And then she did a bunch of... Uh, 
exclusive uh, Star Wars variant. So this one is for Rebel Base Comics and Toys, issue one from uh, Aaron's run on Star Wars in 2015. So I know a lot of people collect this series and there were like 50 variants. I don't see a lot of people that have this one. Tooting my own horn, I guess. Sorry, didn't mean to do that. Poe Dameron, a series I think was absolutely great and just not a lot of people read. Um, well, Dr. Afra and Han Solo, issue four. So it looks like only one of these was done as an exclusive. Looks like most of them were just regular variants. Um, if you haven't read Dayman and you get the chance to find it, go and read it. I just, I love this book. Um, and I had no idea that she had done a cover um, for this until uh, I saw it somewhere one day. I was like, oh my gosh, that's a Hans. So yeah, definitely go pick that up if you can. Charles Soul and Scott Snyder on Undiscovered Country. There is a volume, sorry, issue one variant. Moving right along, Sparrowhawk. I did not, um, I read this series or I read a couple issues. It wasn't quite for me. The, <laughs> the grandeur of the issue isn't as great as the beauty of the cover, which often happens, but is an absolutely beautiful cover. Um, Mercy, I think this is a Mirka Andolfo series. I think I'll get her to sign this at ECCC. And then hopefully Stephanie Hans will sign it one day and I can be happy. It uh, doesn't take much to make me happy. Assassin's Creed, love that cover. Gem, I've said this before, don't skip on Gem. Uh, variant to issue seven is Jen Bartel's first artwork. Stephanie Hans did a variant to issue five. You know, some really cool artwork in that Gem um, series from IDW. Black Magic by Greg Ruc Rucka, excuse me, a burp just escaped. The Cat and the Skull, Cole. Uh, I'm just laughing. Not at all, Conan. Clockwork Angels. This is a series actually written by Neil Pert of Rush. And Stephanie Hans did a variant or did issue one. I can't remember if it has a variant or not. Some older Red Sony action. Again, a Gail Simone book. Um, this is one of the few where I've gotten both like versions of a copy, um, obviously, except for Die, where I went crazy. I, I don't tend to get a virgin variant and a trade dress. I, if I can choose, I'll usually get a trade dress. Just my pr preference. Barbarella and Power Rangers. I don't know anything about this. Never heard of the series beyond this issue. Um, looks kind of cool. Looks like a space helmet guy and a crazy guy hanging out in some sort of looks like a strip club then you realize they're guns and maybe those are not skirts those are just like un assassin uniforms I don't know infinite loop the weatherman don't know much about this series and same with um, electric sublime neither of them were uh, of any note except for the fact that Stephanie Hans did issue sorry I should say neither of them were of a note to me I'm sure to somebody they were very important. Um, James Patterson uh, wrote a book called Max Ride. Why is issue four first? Is this all backwards? Excuse me. Out of order bothers me. Oh gosh, this is all out of order. You're out of order. All right, James Patterson did some work for, uh, or they adapted a James Patterson book for, um, I don't know who James Patterson is, but Marvel adapted one of his books into a comic, and Stephanie Hans did the first bunch of covers. This is first printing of issue one, and I believe this is the second printing. Yep, this is the second printing, almost the same exact cover, except for the color of the wording. Then there is a free Comic Book Day one, or just a free one. I don't know if it's Comic Book Day or not. It's issue two and issue three. I guess issue four and issue five. Psylords, except for the fact that she's kind of using color and it's not quite a similar way to that Valkyrie cover, but sort of, I like it, but I don't love it, love it. Um, and then 
Damsels, Mermaids, Free Comic Book Day from Dynamite. And these are a few where she did the interiors, um, Ant-Man and the Wasp, but not the covers, this Lucifer. Let's see her name there. And she did some interiors for Fearless Defenders. And this Superior Spider-Man as well. I know she did two Faith covers, one which is impossible to find, um, and one which I own but can't find, and will find someday, just don't have it on me right now. All right, last but not least, we got the wall books and some odd bits. And Fearless Defenders, issue four, a one in 50, one of the most beautiful Hans covers. Absolutely love this. This was one that was extremely hard to get. Um, I could never find it for a decent price on eBay. This is the big one that I made. I bought from uh, from Stephanie Hans herself or purchased um, through the uh, the donation I made to whatever charity it was. I can't remember because it was two years ago. Um, you can see down the bottom right, she's got the signature on there. And I'm just so, so happy to have this book in my possession, in my collection. Shout out to Dressier Sabres. Um, Richard is a great, great comic book YouTuber, um, Pokemon YouTuber of late. I don't know much about Pokemon at all, uh, but he knew. He saw one of my original um, Stephanie Hans videos I made years ago, and uh, I mentioned this was one of the books that I needed. And he hit me up. He said, hey, I have an extra copy of that book if you're interested. And we made a deal for what I think is a very, very fair price. And I've always been grateful to him for that. And I still am. Just absolutely gorgeous cover. The smoking gun cover. Another one of her top books. Young Avengers issue two. Um, oh, I love it. I mean, it's just Kid Loki. You've got America Chavez popping bubble gum. It's just, it's just beautiful. Just beautiful all the way through. This book popped a bit recently. Um, a Force number one, the f one in 25, I think, first appearance of Singularity. Ultimates two. Oh, sorry. I didn't realize that. That's where the other A Force cover she did. Um, not in love with this cover, but it's cute and whimsical. Uh, but it's not this cover. Ultimates 2, issue 3, and then this book, you know what, I'm so mad about this book, it's a 1 in 25, the Black Panther series, or was it a 1 in 50, I think it's a 1 in 25, the Black Panther series was, was and is amazing, um, this whole covert, like, I don't want to, spoiler alert, this whole covert assassins, he's got placed all around the world, um, that he hasn't told anybody about. Um, everything about the storyline is great. Everything about Tosin is great. Um, and everything about this cover is great. And I know people were like buying copies of this like crazy, um, thinking that this is gonna be the second appearance of Tosin or, um, and you know, they went all, all out for this one and he wasn't even in it. And then the price has dropped and they've kind of settled now. I just think this cover is spectacular. Um, I mean, <laughs> I could care less about, to not that I, I do actually appreciate Tosin as a character, but I could care less that Tosin's not in this book. I think people need to recognize the work that went into this and just the absolute beauty of this cover and, uh, go buy it. <laughs> and this is, uh, another rare DC appearance, Wonder Woman, black and gold, number six. And the other side of my wall, I've got a few books here. I showed this one before, but this is another one that Stephanie sent me with her signature. Or somebody sent, no, actually, she didn't send this to me. Somebody else sent this to me, or I, I found this one in half price or something with her signature on. I remember being shocked by that. This one I love because I got it dual signed by G. Willow Wilson, Stephanie Hans. Miss Marvel, issue 31, the Virgin variant. This book has just <laughs> gone stratospheric. Uh, it's uh, signed by E. Viewing and Stephanie Hans, Ironheart number one, the first solo Ironheart series. Uh, I remember, I think 
I bought two copies of this, like $50 each. Or no, you know, I bought a, a set that included the A cover, the B cover, the Jen Bartel cover, and this cover for like a hundred bucks. And between this and the Jen Bartel cover, that's like an insane purchase. Um, but that was many, many years ago uh, before people knew what, what this character or what these covers would do. So I guess I got lucky. Um, Captain Marvel, Virgin Variant. I can't remember what issue number that was. This was Storm issue 11. So I don't know if she did 12, but she did do issue 11. Um, Aliens Defiance issue 9. I love this. The spaceship escaping. Just gorgeous. And oh, so 9 and 10. So I do have a bit more Aliens Defiance than I showed you originally. And then another Wicked and Divine cover, which I absolutely like. Nothing on the back of that one. Okay. Um, those are like some of my absolutely all time favorites. That's why they're up on the wall. Uh, the last thing I have to show you are just some trade paperbacks and hardcovers and other bits and pieces that uh, don't fit nicely in my comic boxes or on my wall. Coming in hot to the end. All right. This is one of the variants to uh, the trade paperback for Die issue or volume one. I believe that's the regular cover. Maybe that's the regular cover. I don't remember. I think that's issue two. No, nope, those are ones and ones. So maybe I should go a bit slower and actually see what I have. Oh, that was volume three. That was volume two. Ah, let's do that again. Volume one. Volume one using that like fourth print variant. And this is this gold gilding here it was one of the special um, editions. And then what I just called volume one by accident. There's volume two and volume three. And I don't yet have volume four, but I will get it. Not a problem. All right, let's see what we can do here. We'll do that group of stuff last. We've got covers she did for Ghost in the Shell. This is the same coloring as that Captain Marvel with the flowers, but again, very rare to see that kind of like turquoise, not turquoise, uh, rose, purplish, purplish rose. I'm not even sure what to call it. Did this cover for the Marvel Cinematic Universe guidebook. This is a book, cover art book, and it basically just goes through a bunch of her covers. It's really cool. Um, most of the information on the back is written in French and English, so it's kind of older. Um, you know, there's some of the Angela covers. And that work, Suicide Risk, she did for Boom Studios. So it came out in 2015, I believe. Yeah, so it's really, not, not really old, but in terms of her development as an artist, it's old. And bonus, an older signature. I remember there was a brouhaha with um, a guy on eBay who I accused of faking a book because he said it was a signed 9-8 of that Journey into Mystery um, 633 variant, this one right here, um, is signed 9-8 and he had it for like $9,000. And I was like, that's ridiculous. That's not even her signature. And I tagged her in my IG post. She's like, that's not my signature. And it was CGC certified. And he like went back and she's like, oops, I guess I changed my signature at some point. <laughs> so it was like, okay, I guess you did. Um, anyway, this is some self-published work that she did, uh, in France, um, this is going back to like 2008 or something, I believe. Uh, Galathea, there are two volumes of this story. Uh, so this is like, you know, and there's other French work she has that I'm sure I don't know about. Uh, the comic book market in France apparently is very fractured. There are comics that are for um, kids and there's comics that are for adults. And that's how they, they um, separate them. Uh, and she says she's never liked that. She always wanted to go to the American market where you just did comic book work. Um, but before that, she did these self-published volumes. Um, and the artwork is good. Um, it definitely shows like her beginning as an artist, but uh, it is not her best stuff. It is just cool stuff to have if you are a Stephanie Hans fan. 
Okay, last bunch of stuff. And that I have here. This little postcard here came with, oh, I don't know, sorry about the shaky camera. It came with one of the variants that I got, um, that I sent away for. So it's got Stephanie Hans and Kieran Gillen's signature on. It's number 73 out of 200. So whatever the variant was, there were only 200 of them. Same with this one. This was the one for um, Forbidden Planet UK and Jetpack Comics. Kieran, that's why Kieran signs, by the way, and Hans. This was a movie poster um, from a book of like Marvel movie posters that she did. I'm not even gonna take it out because this is like the bottom half, I think, or this is the top half, but the bottom half is just the bottom half of their bodies. This was the note in the package that she sent me. Now I'm getting really silly because I'm at the end and I've been talking a lot, but it was kind of cool. Come on in to open it up and to see that. And this is an envelope addressed to me from Stephanie Hans. And I, of course, won't show you her address because that would be inappropriate or mine. But you know I live in Tacoma. And that is the sum total of my Stephanie Hans collection. Thank you so much if you made it this far.